Look, I, first of all, look at that. The grays are coming back. Second of all, I really want to personally thank that beauty guru in like 2010 who taught me how to do this hairdo because this hairdo is a lifesaver for any hair, like any length. I'll like link it down below <laughs> somebody that does a similar hairdo because you gotta get on that train. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Lily Reads, where I talk about books and things. And today, I have an exciting video. Actually, you know what, it's not so much an exciting video, it's just that I'm excited to film, and that's <laughs> so good. Uh, as we say here in Monica Land, we're having a high day today. So not in the legal, in some states, sense. But anyway, um, what I'm going to film today, I was going to do a September TBR, but the reality is, with my reading going up and down, as in like my slumps coming in and out, and me picking up books and realizing that I don't want to read them and that I want to DNF them and stuff like that, I just decided to go to my bookshelf and pull books that I want to read throughout not just September, but the fall months. Now fall is my favorite time of year because it's my birthday and I am that much of a narcissist that like everyone else, <laughs> their birthday is their favorite time of year. Also, um, it's not that hot, but I feel this makes every outfit look amazing. So we're just going to go with the high neck kind of um, cute pattern thing. But anyway, let's get into the books that I want to read this fall. Let's start with a new edition. Um, I'll do a video talking all about how my no buy is going. It's going actually great, don't worry. But I have here The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. And if you saw my weekend vlog, which I will link up here, you see that this is about a robot that wakes up in the wilderness and she starts to befriend all the wildlife. She gets to know this place like home until her mysterious past comes back to haunt her. I'm sorry if you can hear construction. There's construction going on. But anyway, her mysterious past comes back to haunt her and show her who she really is and what she's there for. This is a middle grade and I feel like for times like this where I'm not feeling that great, middle grade is the best thing to read. And middle grade sci-fi is so underrated. Also, look at that. How adorable is that? So yeah, this is one of the big, this is one of the books that I'm most looking at. All of these are books that I'm looking forward to reading. And continuing in the vein of middle grade, I have here Orion Lost, and this was written by Alistair Kissholm. We're gonna go with Kissholm. And again, middle grade gets the best covers. Look at that. Aren't those covers really cute? So this book is about a ship called the Orion, and four months after it leaves Earth, it's basically left stranded in the middle of space, and these kids wake up and they have to find a way to get the Orion going to its destination. But not only that, they might have to fight a rogue AI. And that sounds like everything I've ever wanted. And I just watched the movie I Am Mother. So I am so prepared for something like this. And again, I really enjoy middle grade and I like it a lot more than YA simply because I enjoyed being a kid and I feel kid characters are actually written like kids while why a young adult 16 year olds which are not adults but are they are written like small adults and 16 year olds don't act like that but whatever this is just a bunch of 13 year olds that have to fight their way off this ship and it sounds so much fun and this is one of those things again that for when i'm not feeling that great middle grade really has a way of like lifting you up and making you feel good because their stories made for kids so um this is the next book that i want to pick up in the month of not in the month <laughs> in the season of autumn all right up next we have the city in the middle of the night by charlie jane anders now i absolutely love this book the way it looks and this is basically about a planet that is a dying planet from what it sounds like and it's divided permanently between frozen darkness on one side and blazing endless sunshine on the other which by the way reminds me a lot of one of the planets in um to be taught if fortunate which i just read again i'll leave my review up here it's a great review because my chaotic energy in that is real but anyway so 
Humanity clings to life spread across two archaic cities built in the silver of the habitable dusk. And then, but life inside the cities is just as dangerous as the in un, as the unhabitable wastelands outside. Sophie, a student and reductant revolutionary, is supposed to be dead after being exiled into the night, saved only by forming an unusual bond with the enigmatic beasts who roam the ice. Sophie vows to stay hidden from the world, hoping she can heal. But fate has other plans, and Sophie's ensuing odyssey and the ragtag family she finds will change the entire world. This sounds, this does sound YA. You guys know how I feel about YA. But it sounds interesting, it sounds like fun, and honestly, I have this here. This, just the, 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 like the book, <laughs> the physical book alone, remember? I said that I'm like a cover reader, makes me want to read this. So I hope that I can get through this because it sounds super, super, super interesting. Even though it does remind me a little bit of the like ice people from like Loki's planet in Marvel, the Marvel universe, which I don't really like, but anyway. The next book I wanna pick up is Numenon, which I, every time I pick this book up, I'm like, yes, I wanna read you. You know, I'm like so excited to read it and then I never knew. And this is about an astrophysicist named Reggie Strafer that discovers a mysterious object in these space in deep space, a strange star blinking in a seemingly impossible pattern. And somebody told me that actually is based on real things, which mm, I just oh, love it. And uh, Reggie and thousands of, uh, of others join Numenon, a convoy of nine ships on a mission to reveal the origins of this anomalous star. Is it strobing a natural, is this strobing a natural phenomenon or something more alien? And Numenon's voyage will take centuries. To preserve their talents, the convoy is populated by clones of its original crew. Born and reborn in a sealed society with a single purpose, every individual and every generation must come to terms with inheritance that go far beyond DNA. I can't. I'm so, so, so pumped for this book. Like, I can't decide. You know that moment where you can't decide what book to read first? I'm having that with this book because, like, not with this book, with all of these books because I just want several brains to read all of them together. So yeah, I'm really, really, really excited to get to this one. I, oof, it looks so good. It looks so good. I just, I, I can't even. <laughs> <laughs> That's my official review. I can't even. All right, next. Oh my god, I'm I'm both excited and and literally dreading reading this book. And that is Dead Astronauts by Jeff Van Der Beer. This is I think this is um this is a prequel to Born. But here's the thing. I think this is written more in the Annihilation way than in the Born way, which I'm not sure that I'm gonna really like. But I really want to read it because born also cover by complete cover by i love this cover i just i just kind of want to like it's also one of those soft cover books you know like that, that that feels silky and soft and i don't know i just think um jeff vandermeer always takes me on trips that i'm not sure i want to go on but that in the end always leave me wanting more like even like i still lay sometimes in bed and i think about a certain scene in annihilation i'm not going to spoil it for you it's not in the movie or anything but i think about it and i'm like whoa you know <laughs> so um i'm really excited to get to this but i think that to read this i have to be in a really good mental state because otherwise um jeff vandermeer his more I would say surrealist writing can get you down a little bit. So I think I'm gonna wait off on this one a little bit, but I am excited to get to it. Next up, um, an impulse buy that I bought right before my no buy started. And I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> looking down at the book and not at the camera. But it is Armageddon House by Michael Griffin. I have no idea what this is about. I did read the first chapter. I wasn't very captivated by it, but it's so short. And I also kind of like what I do know. It's like there's different people in this house. And it reminds me of Cloverfield Lane 
is that the name of the movie? I'll insert the, the poster here. It kind of makes me think about that. So I, I, I want to read it and I want to know what's going on in this book. I just, I want to discover it. That's what I like about going into books just blind, is that I want to discover them. And this book just definitely is calling out to be discovered. I didn't put the Obelisk Gate and the Stone Sky here, which are the next two in the Broken Earth trilogy. In the Broken Earth trilogy trilogy. <laughs> Simply because I just don't feel like my mental health is at a place where I can read Obelisk Gate and not go down. But obviously they're there. I'm waiting for my mental health to be up to par with where it's supposed to be uh, for me to continue that series. But I do want to read from N.K. Jenison, The City We Became. Now this is urban fantasy. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but everybody whose taste in books is similar to mine has told me that this is amazing. So I have a feeling that it is going to be amazing. In this book, apparently cities are born and New York City, you know, has boroughs and every borough has like an avatar that represents it. And there's one avatar that is trying to take over the city. And I think the avatar, somebody described it like it's literally a Karen. <laughs> So I don't know, it sounds really interesting. I'm really looking forward also to reading the audiobook because they say it has a special effects and I'm really excited about that. I love reading audiobooks and I just, I don't know, there's something nice about having the book, having the audiobook, following along and it's, oh, I just, N.K. Demison, man. I wish that I really was feeling well enough to read the Broken Earth trilogy, but I just feel like until I feel really, really, really well, I can't can't expose myself to the like heartbreak of the obelisk gate because I feel that that would just be a little bit too much for me. Also, yes, I realize this still says August. I have to change it. <laughs> Finally, I have an anthology that I haven't finished. I've read almost every single story in it, but I haven't finished it completely. And that is Latinx Rising by, edited by Matthew David Goodwin and the introduction is by Frederick Luis Aldama. So I'm very excited to just finish this because oh, I, every story here is so good. Of course, I like the sci-fi ones better because sci-fi, but I just have such a difficult time finding Latinx authors writing adult sci-fi. And this just gives me a little bit of what could be and I want it to be. Please, all Latinx authors out there that are writing adult fiction, please write more science fiction so that I can appreciate it and love it. And hopefully in English so that I can recommend it to my audience. So I, I love that I'm talking to Latinx authors as if they were watching my videos, but you know, one can dream. All right, I'm pretty sure that you notice that most of this is sci-fi and there's a simple reason for that. I realized that my comfort zone is sci-fi. I like to read sci-fi. It's what makes me happy. It's what sparks joy. In fact, when I was pulling all of these books out from my shelves, I was like, yes, sci-fi this, sci-fi that, give me all the sci-fi. But I also have another genre that I rarely mention that I really like, and that is horror or thrillers. So I have two horror thriller books that I'm really looking forward to reading, and the first one is The Other People by CJ Tudor. I read The Chalk Man <laughs> by CJ Tudor, and I really, really enjoyed it. So I actually forgot what this is about, which is great because I love going into books blind, as you know, and I really want to read this. And now that the weather is getting gloomy and cold and stuff, I think this is the perfect read. And this is a hardcover and holding this, I never realized how much maybe I like hardcovers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I have no idea what this is about. I think that this is about, I think this is maybe a little bit more supernatural than the Chalk Man, but I'm not sure and I am willing <laughs> to go into it blind. Leave me down below if you've read it and if you enjoyed it, but please don't spoil it for me. Don't tell me if it's supernatural or not. Just tell me if you enjoyed it or not. And finally, the last book I want to get through in the season of autumn is The Tenth Girl by Sarah Faring. I think Sarah Faring is actually a um, Argentinian woman. 
Yeah, she is Argentinian American. So this is actually written by a BIPOC person who is very much white passing. But anyway, that doesn't matter. Still BIPOC, just like me. The tenth girl is about a girl that gets sent to what is it called? Vaccaro School. And that's like a kind of like a boarding school in Argentina. And it seems like it's like a ghost story. But like I said when I called this, I kind of spoiled myself, I think, because I don't know if you can see the embossing on here. Let's see if you can see it. But it's all ones and zeros. So I think that this is actually going to be more about technology than it is going to be about ghosts. I think it's going to be kind of what I believe turn of the key is, but I'm not sure. So um, I'm willing to go into this. I've heard mixed reviews about this, but you know what? I'm going to support my wonderful neighbor, <laughs> Argentinian neighbor, and read her book. And I'm actually super excited. And as you notice, these two are also they're both hard covers which is very weird for me but um yeah i'm see i'm so excited to read these books that's what i needed i needed to be excited to read books again because i was kind of feeling blah about it and i was reading a lot of books that weren't sparking joy and i wasn't dnfing them because they were very popular and i sometimes feel like the reason my channel isn't growing as fast as I would like it to grow is because I don't read really popular books. And then I decided that I don't give a fuck. I mean, I want my channel to grow, but I don't want to force myself to go through, like, read books that I don't like just for channel growth. So, I hope you enjoyed <laughs> this video. I hope you enjoyed my little rant at the end. I think I'm going to do a whole video about it, but we'll see. And these are the books that I plan to read in the season of autumn. I might add more, I might add, I might take some out, I might DNF some, we don't know. But I want to give myself like the ability to just enjoy reading again, you know, and, and get excited about what I'm going to read. So these are the ones that are on my radar. I might, like I said, like I might not read any of them or I might read one or two. I'm gonna give myself the grace of mood reading because I really need it at the moment. <laughs> so um, again, let me know down below if you have read any of these books, if you like them, if you hated them, if you think I'm gonna like them because a lot of you know my reading taste by now. And for those of you that don't, just tell me what you think. I love hearing from you and well, as always, I bid you adieu with a friendly reminder that I post every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays without fail. And sometimes, if I'm feeling a little extra, I pepper in videos throughout the week. And I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Thank you so much for watching.